Hi guys, welcome back on the channel. On today's video, we're going to have a flip through of Swordpoint PDF version that was released. Well, I found it out recently, and it's an uh, Grieving Beast uh, website. It cost, I think, around eight pounds, and I think it was a great bargain uh, to get a quite um, well, a very good rule set, in my opinion. And um, that's why I decided to, although I have so many um, videos about Swordpoint and workshops, I decided to do a flip through and um, have a look how the book looks. So we start Sword Point, Ancient and Medieval War Games Rules, second edition from Grim Beast. Here's the credit written by Martin Gibbons. And we have the contents. We're gonna zoom a bit in uh, when we start getting into the, you know, nitty gritty. Introduction, playing the game and choosing forces is the first pages and setting up the game. Um, competitive play, deploying your troops, and uh, there's always this uh, uh, blue box that uh, is talking about some special rules. It has some really beautiful photographs in the rulebook. We're going to zoom in very soon. Now, here, let's go in the basic concept here, which is the first important page. So here you can see that uh, units have a defense value and a cohesion value. That's how the rules work. Uh, commanders have an attack and a cohesion value. Attack because uh, basically their defense is the unit's defense that they are attached to. And the cohesion value, uh, if they're in command range and some special, um, in some special circumstances also, uh, they can, the units can use the, co the commander's cohesion value. The same with the units the defense value is uh, how much do they need uh, to roll um what what is basically the defense and cohesion is a cohesion value for morale test now here is where you see the basing system you have the minimum and the maximum number of bases and then the model suggested by the in every base depending on the troops if it's skirmish if it's infantry if it's formed open order like the longbowman for example and the base sizes these obviously you can they're 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 suggested by the author, but you can use um, anything you like. 40 by 40 bases is the standard uh, for um, a sword point. Then you talk about unit order and uh, command and control, the facing measurement, momentum tokens, uh, form troops, and a base strength. Every, every troop has a base strength, and uh, when you reach um, hits uh, equal to uh, your unit's base strength, then... Uh, one base is removed. Uh, has some really beautiful pictures here. Now here you discuss how you win the game. Basically, every unit, depending on its points, gets some army points. And then if you uh, you add this together, and if you reach uh, half, then your army breaks. You reach your army breaking point. Uh, also, army general, uh, other commanders, and elephants uh, deduct from this army point but they're not added in the addition. The addition is, the, the, the calculation is only the units. Uh, the, the generals and the elephants just deduct um, if they're lost. And here's really beautiful um, dark ages, I think. They look really good. Now you have the game turn. And um, you start with the initial phase, the shooting phase, the movement phase, and the combat phase. The good thing with sword point and the innovative thing is that the shooting phase is before the movement phase. So you don't have uh, rules like, um, you know, um, closing shots that many rules that have, portraying, depicting the last shot of the longbowman or the archer to the crossbowman before they get charged. This happens automatically in sword point because shooting is anyway before movement. So the initial phase, you basically have the cohesion, loss, and terror tests, impetuous tests, returning troops from the outside the table, and you remove the discouraged markers. That's the initial phase, tidying up the combat phase, basically. Here again, very beautiful photographs of dark ages. Really beautiful. And then you have your shooting phase, where it explains clearly the target and how you can check. They have really, really nice uh, diagrams, uh, the target and uh, the... Um, angle is checked is calculated by the center of the unit where you have supposedly your commander, your captain, and it explains to you how uh, things work, how you shoot between a gap. You have your ranges, and um, um, as you can see, longbow for example, crossbow twenty four inches, and then how you hit a target. Always you hit with a four, and um, your modifiers. So if you see if you have superior shooter, inferior shooter. If you're shooting in long range, all these are added and subtracted. Uh, you have covers, soft covers, and hard covers. And here you determine the results of shooting depending, uh, then obviously the, your opponent defends depending on the armor it has. 
So there is no armor is seven. So basically six is always a success, but the author puts it like this. So light armor is minus one, so it's a six, uh, a roll of six and, ab and above. So above. Heavy and partial plate armor is minus two, so it's a five, so a five and above. Plate is minus three. A shield adds, well, adds a minus one bonus. Large shield, if you have any budding when your horse is budded, this, um, this influences um, shooting. Then you have the movement phase, that the movement phase has to be followed really carefully. So you roll for initiative and the winner decides who will uh, start. So, so you declare the charges and then you have the charge responses. The charge responses, depending on the unit you have, could be an evade, could be a hold, could be counter charge. And um, after your charge responses, so here you see hold, evade, counter, cavalry, counter charge. So after your charge responses, you go... Um, to rallying uh, fleeing uh, troops and uh, rallying fleeing troops is quite interesting because depending on what enemies you have around the rallying becomes more and more difficult also in order to rally troops you must have a command figure in command range and that's a quite interesting concept we're going to talk about it at the end where we're going to talk about the commanders then you do your compulsory moves that means that probably the units that haven't been rallied and they're fleeing they have to flee then you move your chargers and um, you continue by, um, she explains to you what's a failed charge and maneuver before charge, explains to you how the charge works. It's really beautiful. I need to, I, I need to venture in, the, in Crusades. Um, here's the movement range, 16, 12, and 8. And then you do your remaining moves after you do the compulsory moves. Remaining moves means basically when you move the chargers, you have units that are not fleeing. You have units that are there and you just move them around as support. So for example, if you charge with some uh, infantry, uh, then uh, the remaining move will be to bring maybe another unit for support for a line of battle that we'll explain in the next pages. Now here explains to you the one inch rule. The one inch rule means that no unit can pass along an, an enemy unit w within one inch. And that's quite good because you avoid all these kind of geometrical, mathematical moves that uh, flank your opponent just because uh, you, know, you, you can do a 90 degrees turn and attack him so this is something that um, doesn't allow this and it makes sense a quite good uh, maneuver diagram so you know how units move and here is again uh, the one inch rule explained quite well now we're talking about uh, maneuvering about face changing formation and terrain all clearly explained effects of terrain and uh, returning troops again here special rules every now and so then it, it gives you some special rules drill evade nomad cavalry pathian short phalanx these are all explained at the end of the book and here you have um, examples of terrain what's an obstacle what's a difficult terrain what's an open terrain and then it's really really beautiful this it's really, really beautiful so we continue in the combat phase where it explains to you the, how you fight the combat, which models of fighting, who fights first. If you're charged, you fight first, you attack first if you're a superior unit. If you have some specific weapons like a lance and then, then any casualties you may depict, your opponent will fight depleted. Uh, different weapons, you can customize your troops in sword point to be aggressive and give negative modifiers with double-handed weapons to your opponent's defense role or you can have a more defensive unit that will hold the shield and will have a better defense value and better defense die roll but not good attack depending on your strategy or you can have a bit of both obviously a double-handed weapon cannot hold a shield and then uh, you continue talking about defending obstacles and uh, the results of close combat. And again, we have in close combat the modifiers, as we saw previously in uh, shooting. We have close order troops get a plus one. The depth bonus, you get a plus one. An army general, if an army general is attached, you get a plus one. And typical, you know, rule, high ground, flank attack, rare attack, overwhelming numbers. That's quite interesting one if you are almost double of your opponent. If you're discouraged, if you're nervous, you get minuses, disorganized, also minus one. And then you have the result, a difference in um, combat uh, results, scores, zero to one, you continue fighting. Two to three, you become discouraged, fall back four inches, continue fighting. Four to five, become discouraged, take a break test. If passed, fall back four inches, continue fighting. If fail, break and flee. Six or more, become discouraged and, and break and flee. No tests required. Very beautiful here. So um, then you, you, you have the line of battle. That's the most important part of the rules for me, the most innovative part. And uh, let's zoom in and see. Now, so um, what's a line of battle? The line of battle basically is a, a very innovative rule that uh, 
forces you to create a coherent line and no super unit can even um we, it's 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 not going to be victorious even with weaker units who create a line of battle that's supporting each other so in this photograph you see here in this very nice diagram you see unit d is fighting unit b let's give you an example let's say unit D rolled a five, a five against unit B. That's, that means, we saw previously, that will be tricky break test. Break test that's quite difficult, they're very tricky. So B would have taken a break test, probably break and flee. But B, because it's in a line of battle with A and C, and a line of battle consists of uh, units that are within one inch, uh, will divide the result of five by three the two flanking units supporting it, and itself. So rounded up, this will be two. This will be pushed back in good order. So you see how important the line of battle is. If, if uh, in the same situation, D was fighting A, A would have divided the result by two, because B is in its flanks, and A and C obviously by two. You cannot divide more than three. Um, the same here, this is a line of battle. A is vertical to B, but because it's within inch, it can be considered as a line of battle. So this is a very important part of the rules, how important it is to have a coherent line, and the line of battle really changes the result and helps units uh, hold and control. Obviously, the pushbacks really create a very dynamic terrain, but line of battle is very important. Here, if you have uh, a melee that is staggered, as you can see, there's no distinction between who is fighting whom. You consider this as one melee. It will be one result, and then it will be divided by the line of battle um, for every unit. A will divide it by two, B will divide it by three, C will divide it by three, D will divide it by two, and the same with uh, E, F, and H. Skirmishers can uh, form a line of battle, but only if they're at the end of the line of battle. But you cannot divide for more than three. So we're talking here about the death of commanders, how they die, and uh, applying the combat results and award momentum tokens, depending on what, what actions you perform, you get momentum tokens that you can use and bo boost your attack or your uh, initiative if you want. Cohesion tests, uh, how they're happening, and uh, then you're talking about fleeing and uh, pursue uh, pursue into fleeing troops, pursue into fresh enemy, uh, pursue move, all these are explained, pursuit off the table, and after pursuit and overrun, and special rules. And then if we go here, we go, it's very beautiful, to cohesion test, and we see what a cohesion test uh, we have. We have six types of cohesion tests, well, for six reasons. Fleeing friends within four inches at the start of the turn, French break from or are destroyed in combat within 12 inches, charge in the flank or rear, the general is slaying, the unit suffers 25% casualties from shooting in one turn, a charge is declared on an unformed unit. Unformed unit is when you are reduced to your minimum number of bases as per the original table we saw at the beginning. So it explains to you how, how you perform the cohesion test and skirmishes, and then how you use lose unit cohesion and all about cohesion in general, units getting discouraged and depleted. Again, beautiful photographs from Crib and Beast. And then you have command figures explain to you the commanders. You have a general and you have captains and you have commanders with units that give bonus dice and then commanders are cohesion. There's a quite interesting rule and very gives you strategic options. Commanders, um, uh, units that are breaking, breaking, not fleeing, not rallying, not um, breaking, rallying, not um, taking cohesion tests, cannot take a rally test if they're not within command range. So you understand how interesting it is you have two to six commanders or more, depending. Some commanders may be ahead fighting with a unit, supporting it with the extra dice. The others could be in the back trying to recover the units that are fleeing, being able to give them the chance to rally. Uh, rally To rally, you have to be in command range of a captain or a general, but you can use only the general's cohesion. For, um, for cohesion tests, uh, that the ones, the five types we talked previously, you can use any general's cohesion if he's in command range. Now you're talking about shooting in generals, generals in combat, all about generals, and um, um, these are typical rules uh, that you that um, are easily explained. And here it explains to the order. If you have close order troops, how they move, the shooting, combat, open order. It's a nice resume of open order and close order troops, and that's very beautiful photographs really amazing and then skirmish order really amazing photographs effects of terrain and how skirmishes work um these are the three orders now you have specialist forces special rules for chariots um that um 
armor saves uh, that you may use in your armies. And elephants, there's a big section about elephants, about combating different units, skirmishers, uh, elephants, how you uh, you hit them, and then stampede elephants and stampede movements. Quite interesting, I think. I've read the rules. I've never played with elephants. I didn't have armies with elephants, but um, it was it's, it's quite substantial, quite uh, ex explains a lot about elephants and um, how everything works. And here are the chariots and the elephants. So we have special rules, as all books have. We have different special rules. Ambush, combined formation, combined units, drilled, um, so on and so forth. Mass cavalry, mixed order, evade, mounted infantry, levies, nomad cavalry, pathian shot, spara, stratagem, shield walls, stubborn troops. We've seen this. It gives some special attributes to every unit, special characteristics to make it different a little bit from the counterparts. And this is a very nice reference section where you have all the rules uh, compiled into, into a couple of uh, pages where you don't have to go and if you want to see some modifiers or something, you just don't need to search the book. You have it as a reference here, awarding momentums, etc. Here we have scenarios, different scenarios that you can play. I've played a couple, they're quite good. Oh, this is very beautiful, I think. Uh, skirmish, scouting class, there's quite a few scenarios that you can use and explains to you the turns, the deployment and the victory condition. So guys, this is from me. I just wanted to show in case you the PDF version of Swordpoint. Now, um, obviously you know that Swordpoint has um, supplements that uh, um, you use for special rules of different periods and uh, special uh, units, but there is ample army lists in uh, the Grieving Beast website. You can use them. They play perfectly well. 100 Years War, I played before, before the supplement coming out. It was very enjoyable. had almost everything required. So if you don't have the supplements, you really don't need to get them in order to play uh, Sword Point. Anyway, guys, this is from me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Um, have a great weekend, and bye-bye. Talk to you soon.